For the first time in Java's 20 plus year public history, the platform will no longer be presented as one big monolith, but rather as a series of modules. What you see in front of you is the current runtime module graph for Java 9, the upcoming Java 9 release. It all starts out with this Java base module at the bottom and then additional functionality is added. You bring in these modules to do what you need to do. Now there are lots and lots of benefits to doing this. What we want to focus on today is the ability now with Java 9 to provide custom runtimes for your application such that only the modules you need will be provided in that runtime, thus obviously shrinking the size of this image that you can distribute, making it more secure, the fact that you don't have this extra code around is always a good idea, and many, many other benefits. So today what we'll do is we'll provide a very simple example, show how you can use the tools that are part of Java 9 to create runtime image for your sample application. Taking a look at that program, we're presenting it in an early access build of NetBeans which supports the JDK9 platform. There are obviously several alternatives quite capable where you can do the same thing. Uh, the program itself is very, very simple. All it does is logs a message uh, utilizing the Java logging utility. The reason why we choose this is, uh, although quite capable, the java.base module we made reference to earlier does not have logging capabilities. So in order to actually send a log using the logging framework, we need to pull in an additional module called Java logging to do so. So this is a good uh, example, simple example, showing how we can use multiple modules and create an image for those multiple modules. Hopefully this will make more sense as we continue. Let's drop down to Windows command tools so that we can execute the individual Java commands necessary to create one of these reduced images. Uh, before we do that, let's just take a look at our environment here to, to confirm that in fact we are uh, in a Java 9 environment. Notice our path does have JDK 9 first in the path, such that if we type a Java minus version, it should come back and tell us that indeed we are running a Java 9 early access version of Java. Uh, we are also in the simple apps home directory with respect to NetBeans such that if we do a dir in this directory you'll see there are a series of subdirectories. The one to take a note of here is the dist directory. That's where NetBeans will place the jar file created by default for this application. So if we uh, move to that directory and then uh, just do a dir on that you'll see that in fact we do have our simple app.jar file. So this is a plain old jar file. Uh, it is not yet suitable to be utilized in one of these reduced images. What we have to do is make this a modular jar file. And the way we can do this about this simply is by going into NetBeans and creating one of these new things called a module info that is required for, for Java 9 to make modular jar files. We add this to our project and what you'll see is it'll show up in the default package. In other words, at the root level of the package. And what we need to do now is populate this uh, module info file. And the best way to do that would be to utilize a tool that's available in uh, Java 8, first in Java 8, enhanced in Java 9 called JDEPS. And what this will tell us is what dependencies uh, this uh, simple app jar file has. And notice that it comes back with a few. Uh, it requires both Java base and Java logging. So this is the sort of information we want to put into this module info file. So let's go ahead and cut and paste that in there now. Um, and basically what we're saying here now is that this module does two things. First off, it requires a couple of modules to run. Everybody needs Java base. Uh, as I mentioned before, Java logging is some additional functionality that is required. And furthermore, we also specify what other folks are allowed to access as, uh, with respect to this package. And in this case, the simple app uh, package contains the, our main program, so we want to export that so we can use it. Once this is done, uh, we can simply clean and build, and now we've effectively created a modular jar file within NetBeans. Before we can create a runtime image, the first thing we'll need to do is modify the simple app.jar file by executing the following command. A uh, little explanation is in order here. Uh, first off, we're issuing the jar command with a minus update directive. Uh, we need to specify the file that we're going to update, in this case, the dist simple app.jar file. We're going to add a main class into the jar files manifest. This will make it easier. Uh, to run module-based applications that we'll, we'll explain later. Um, 
The module version needs to be specified, 1.0 in this case, since we're relatively new into this. And then finally, we need to tell what file we want to add to the jar file. In this case, we're going to add the compiled version of our module.info file. And we're going to get that from the NetBeans build slash classes directory where compiled classes reside. So we execute this command, and now we can do a jar tbf on the this simple app to see um, what the jar file now looks like. And it should look not that much different than your common jar file, except now, in addition to the usual suspects, the manifests, and the, uh, the simple app main class, we have a module info class file included. And that, uh, as we had indicated earlier, shows up in the root of this jar file. In order to create one of these runtime images, we need to take advantage of a new utility in Java 9 called JLink. Here's the command that we're going to execute. Let's explain what's going on here. Uh, first off, we need to specify a module path. This is somewhat analogous to a class path in, in old time Java. Uh, and, and in here, what we need to do is say, where are the library of modules that you'll use to construct one of these runtime images? Uh, we have first off our simple app uh, dot jar custom jar file that we just created and the library of modules that come bundled with the Java 9 release. Uh, once we have that specified, we need to tell what modules we actually want to add to our runtime image. And all we're sp stating here is simple app. And what will happen is this utility will go ahead and take a look at simple apps module info dot class file. And in there, uh, it'll look at the requires and say, OK, here are the known uh, modules that I need to add in addition to simple app to put into this runtime. It'll do that work for you. We must specify where we want to output this new image. So we'll just throw it in the disk directory. You'll see something called jimage when we're through. And then finally, we want to issue a directive to slightly compress this file to save a little bit more space. So we'll hit return now and go ahead and run this. And then uh, when this process completes, it shouldn't take too long, it will go ahead and create a jimage directory within that subdirectory of dist. So let's go there now. Um, and do a dir, and sure enough, uh, you now see that we have a jimage directory available that has been created. Let's work with our newly created image. Uh, the first thing we'll want to do is just confirm that in fact we are uh, a, a valid version of Java, of Java runtime. So we just I issue within the jimage directory, it's been Java executable with the minus version argument. You see that in fact we are a Java 9 early access runtime. Uh, the next thing we can do is uh, take a look at the modules that are part of this runtime. List modules is a new argument that's available to Java 9. Um, and you'll see that there are only three available. Uh, it's our simple app jar file that we created and its dependencies, in this case Java base and Java logging. If we, if we contrast that to uh, what is available in a standard Java 9 runtime, you should see that there are quite a bit more. So here's a Java-list modules on the standard Java 9 runtime. You can see that there are 90 some odd modules currently available there. So clearly, we're saving a lot of space here. Uh, so the next question is, how can we go about running a Java application based upon this image? So I'm going to cut and paste a, uh, uh, an executable in here. So uh, basically, what we're doing here is we're running the Java executable within our J image. We're specifying a module and a main class with this minus men option, m option. Uh, simple app is the module forward slash simple app dot main is the main class we run it and sure enough this works we can run a shorthand version of this because we specified the main class within our manifest by just doing a java dash m simple app and the same thing should happen again so that's how you can run a java application uh, from within an image in a relatively simple fashion Final thing we want to show you is how much space did we actually save by creating this custom runtime image so let's take a look at um, the what the standard size is for the current Java 9 early access uh, build. It's pretty large, probably going to be smaller when we come out with a formal release, but right now it's 424 megabytes. That's how large the Java 9 runtime is with, if it's all, with all its bells and whistles. Uh, the question is how big is our runtime that we just created in our disk directory? So we'll do a properties on that and you'll see that it's only 24.2 megabytes. So a significantly smaller version of the runtime adequate enough to run your application clearly in time uh, we will probably do a lot of work to make this even smaller. 
One final thought is if you want to avoid the tedium of typing in all the commands shown in this video demonstration, uh, the following blog uh, points to a recipe that you can use to automate the build process in NetBeans so that it will automatically create one of these runtime images for you if you'd like. So that's about all. Thanks for watching. Hope this was worthwhile.